Hey, this is Caravan Thieves. You're listening to Recess, Recess with, with Spinelli. Spinelli. You're listening to a Recess with a Spinelli. You are tuned in to Recess with Spinelli here on WSPN 91.1 FM, Saratoga Springs, New York, Hoxton FM, London, England, the International Radio Festival, Milan, Italy, and the New York State Music Blog. And today we are here with Fuzz, Rich, Nicole, and Carrie of the Bridgeport, Connecticut band, Gypsy Swing Band, if you will, Caravan of Thieves. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yay! We're happy to be here. Now, you've been touring uh, pretty extensively, or at least been pretty active musically within the Northeast, especially within the past six, eight years. Uh, I first saw you guys in Burlington in 2010. Now, when do you think uh, you started getting comfortable playing shows in the Northeast uh, to the point where you started becoming more easily, folks started coming out to shows, and you became more comfortable with the audi- audience? I don't know that there's like a point in time I mean there's been because it's different every constant growth and evolution you know it's like certain places pick up quicker than others so you show up and sometimes you'll show up and there's a full house because the venue has a really good draw and they'll take a chance on something they don't know but they love the venue and they know they bring in quality acts and so we've kind of locked out in those kind of performing arts center kind of ton of scenarios and then they'll come back the next time and the next time and know the songs the next times that we're through um, other times it's like you go to a market or a place and you you have 20 people or 50 people and then each time you go it grows and it grows and it grows and each time they bring their friends and they're spreading the music and they're learning it as they go so um, it's kind of uh, dependent on on the different towns and the different areas. How, how would you guys interact with your audience when you're doing a live performance uh, to kind of make them part of the show? I mean we, we just push them we push them into it and say start clapping. I like to say we invite them. I mean we do we invite them but it's 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 kind of a you know people need a nudge sometimes you know and, and we certainly say come on let's do this and you know I think what happens is we sort of gradually build through the show saying hey clap along sing along on something or you know it's maybe subtle at first and by the end it's kind of like all right get out of your seats and, and and come and join us to get in a huddle and sing raise the dead or something like that you know when you're when you're interacting with your audience it's kind of like just an uh, exaggerated amplified version of when you're going to interact with just somebody one-on-one or maybe in a group of five people or something like that you know like you sort of like have to ease into you know like sort of conversation and so it's kind of like the show is sort of a you know we have to kind of like we can't come out of the gate being like all right everybody start singing now like like there's sort of this pickup of of um you know getting people involved you know a little by a little bit at a time Still afraid of our daily departed, right? What are your thoughts on? A studio recording versus a live performance, and how you have to separate them. Well, you know, the live show is absolutely different. You know, it's it's. I mean, some people don't look at it that like that way. They would just say, "Oh, why don't I try to capture what we do live on the record?" You know, and that's fine. That's a good thing. But but uh, but we've always looked at it like because the show, I, I don't want to be confined to one or the other. You know, because when we do the show, we we want to change it. And plus, when we go in the studio, we have a lot of options. We can say, "Hey, you know, maybe we." Want to record a piano on the song, or we want to record more strings. We want to have it actually a string section as opposed to a single string or whatever. And 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 we can't reproduce that live, so we'll have to make up for it in other ways. So, for example, you saw us play Dead Wrong tonight, and it's a kind of a big production. We went a little overboard on it, and we said, let's go and let's make this song really cool for the studio. We have, you know, instrumentation that we don't even normally have in the band, and uh, but we just want to make the record sound good, because we thought it would represent the song well. But then we said, so for the show, we can't do that, so let's just do something entirely different. So we'll make it, we'll go the other direction. We'll, we won't have any instruments, we'll just sing it. You know, we'll sing it in acapella, and we'll stomp and clap, and everybody you know, and, and 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 both things have their value. I mean, the production of the studio thing sounds great, and it delivers the song. But then live, we get everybody singing and clapping, and it's one of the highlights of the show. I think if we tried to make this song sound like the record, 
in the show it would fall flat you know this this allows it to be you know because live is different you live you're trying to demonstrate uh, certain you know showcase certain talents for the live thing we can have a big jam session with rich and I could go at it and have like a you know you know like let it open and open up to some you know two minute guitar solo guitar bass interactions the thing is that on the record I feel like that may not translate mm -hmm. you know people just want to hear the song or whatever but at live they want to see us do that it's like a live moment and and, and we have it every night where we're, we're like we feel like we're on the te teetering on the brink of destruction because we, you know we're like trying to interact and like maybe there's a moment where you know oh I didn't expect that to happen and we sort of recover the ball and but that's the kind of thing that the audience loves to see now the other thing I've noticed that you uh, do in the live performance is every now and then uh, you ditch all the mics and you go straight to one microphone Microphone. What, what are your thoughts on using that one microphone in the center and having everybody play around it as opposed to uh, miking everybody? You know, you're playing a whole night of music, right? And it's fun to change up the dynamic a little bit for the audience and for us it's like a comp it's more intimate. The things blend differently when they're not going through all different inputs. They're just going through this one thing, this one central microphone together. So when we're all just, it's capturing everything at once and putting it through to the audience. And I think it's a nice, uh, nice shift, you know, in energy and and sound um, to try things out like that and you know we do the duo things like that because it just it just makes more sense it feels more blended and, and intimate like I was saying now Maple Hill Sessions the EP uh, this came about obviously after the the latest Caravan of Thieves album Kiss Kiss now did you guys were you looking for something a little bit more simple uh, when you approach that EP as to maybe not use the whole band for that? The songs were different than the songs that we had written for Caravan of Thieves, but we really liked the songs, and so we wanted to record them. And it just didn't make sense to say Caravan of Thieves because it was not in the same genre or style. It was uh, a little more straightforward, uh, a little bit more to the center than Caravan is a little bit more to the left or, you know, center. And so it just it didn't really fit with the um, the kind of compilation of work we had put together for Caravan of Thieves and so it had to be its own thing. It kind of had more of that harmonized singer-songwriter exactly. uh, mentality. Right, which is how we started and we've been talking about making this EP <laughs> since we met and had a, started off with a band instead and then went into another band and so we never actually recorded anything as a duo even though over the many years we were it was something that we wanted to do so it was you know kind of time and we had this, the batch of songs and it was like all right you know this this makes sense we have these songs and we wanted to do this anyway so let's just and we had a great space to do it it opened up to us the barn it was an amazing amazing space to record in and and so we just went ahead and did it we made it very simple Well, it's late and it's cold and I'm gonna grow old here alone But I'll sit here waiting, try to break the stone Yeah, I get sad when you're not here so let's dive into a little bit of the history. Uh, I understand Caravan of Thieves started around 2008, but I think you two met in 2003? Yeah, right right at the end of 2003. We, when we met, we were in pretty different places musically. It was like me playing electric guitar and funk and rock and jazz, and Carrie was singer-songwriter playing acoustic guitar. And Well, our first thing together was a duo thing playing acoustic guitars. You know, we played a show like that, and, uh, and it was fun. You know, we were just sort of like, what songs do you know? What's, you know? Like we were kind of thrown into the deep end of the pool, though, because it was a you know it was it was a show opening up for Dickie Betts at at a, at a pretty nice theater in Ridgefield, Connecticut, and it just sort of came about and and. Uh and and then the next the next show after that was opening up for Blues Traveler, and so we kept getting these like good gigs opening up for people as a duo, and we were barely prepared for it, but uh, but we started to um, you know it threw us out there, and, and uh, then we like Carrie said we 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 were probably thinking about just doing the duo thing, but then of course it was like well I know this drummer you know I know this bass player, and so we started to like put a band together and. The band didn't work actually because we, I don't think we really wanted to, it was more of a rock band. I was playing, I was, I was not ready to give up my electric guitar yet, you know, and uh, so I was like, I'll kind of do this acoustic thing, but I'm also going to play electric, you know, but, but then when, 
we fully committed to Caravan of Thieves as the sound because it was we wanted to go all acoustic. We wanted to change the whole vibe of it and not be a rock band. I was like, there's too many rock bands out there. Like, let's see if we could do something totally different that's like a combination of our our influences that are pop and rock music and other stuff too and R and B and jazz and you know but also include this gypsy jazz thing and, and and classical music it's just a real sort of hodgepodge of all the stuff that we liked and trying to figure out a way to make it um, unique but not so weird that it, nobody gets what we're doing you know what I mean and so it allowed us in a way to become much better uh, songwriters and, and arrangers of music because it was a little bit more of a kind of an open and a clean slate because we it was almost like you know when you when you're trying to just do another thing that maybe other people are doing it, you feel like you have this sort of commitment to make it sound like that uh, i know this from my experience of doing deep and out of blackout because we really wanted to sound like james brown meets the meters and like and and i felt like we we're sort of confined to that for those parameters but caravan of these was kind of like uh well it's just something that we're inventing on our own here and so we can it allowed the songwriting to really open up to be its own you know whatever we decided at the time kind of thing. So at the end of the day, what makes you want to continue making music, performing music, being in a band? What are some of the little things that essentially just make you happy. That that feeling you get when you're uh, in the moment with your bandmates and the audience, and you're all kind of just right there, and nothing else is going on, and you're just you're right there together, and that's a really special thing. It's just because we love it, or you know, I I love it. You know, it's like I like playing music, writing music. I like, you know, just doing music stuff, whatever it is. You know, I, I, I and even just the stupid things that go along with as much as I, I kind of it's a pain a pain in the butt like I kind of you know I like doing things like building stupid trash can drum kits and then it's sort of like it's just invention I guess my, my thing is I'm really into invention like I you know if I wasn't playing music I'd probably be some cuckoo inventor or something like that because I just like to invent things and to me music is an invention it's like you know you're trying to invent a style or invent a, you know a collection of notes that makes a good song or a good piece of music or build some weird thing that you can turn into an instrument or something you know just and 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 the other thing is just <coughs> it feels good when when you've performed or written something and it affects people like you know when we do that raise the dead at the end, end of the night you know it's there's there's people who they leave they go home with that like they feel it makes them feel good or it, it conjures up an emotion for them and uh, whether they're listening to the record or, or having that experience at the show and, and and so that's that's a big thing to me like that you're actually delivering something to people that they can you know that it affects their life in such a way that it's you know that you know it's positive but also like uh it just because i know how for me like for uh, all my life music has been such a part big part like listening to it and, and uh before i was even playing i just you know you hear it it, it makes you feel a certain way it's it's like becomes your the soundtrack to your life it's just nice to know that maybe some of your music is the soundtrack to somebody's life all right and final question uh, this one's up to you, really, in, in essence. Uh, any final thoughts? Anything you want to leave your, your fans and our listeners off with? Shine as bright as you can shine and love as much as you can love and live your life the best that you can live it. You have been listening to Recess with Spinelli here on WSPN 91.1 FM, Saratoga Springs, New York, Hoxton FM, London, England, the International Radio Festival, and the New York State Music Blog. And we've been speaking with Caravan of Thieves from Bridgeport, Connecticut.